So here we are in the continuation of this topic. So the idea is how can we get those lib trace FS and all those things and take it to the extreme on optimization and extreme on readability of the output. That, that's basically the idea uh, after timer out and the, the tools inside the RTLA and how can we create all them integrated. That there's a set of tools inside of RTLA and we can integrate other tools like Steven was mentioning. So just explaining, I work for Red Hat in the real-time team and uh, Stephen was there, and then I started working with those things. <clears throat> and, and we worked together since that time. So, okay, maybe this will be shorter because Stephen uh, already mentioned things here, but let's... So Linux uh, has been used as a real-time operating system, and there are multiple reasons for people to use it, like software stack and availability of the, the, the new software, people that are trained on it, but also because Linux achieves the, the desired time and behavior. <clears throat> and some features that help there is, is like the fully preemptive mode, real-time scheduling, scheduling deadline, and so on. So one of the problems, however, is that the way that we show the timing properties of Linux. So for example, we use cyclic test, that is a black box tool that mimics a, a real-time workload, and, and the latency gives a report of the latency without explaining why, right? So uh, for example, cyclic test sets the timer in the future, it fires, and it measures the latency. That, that's what it measures, right? The, the black box approach, you cannot say it doesn't work, right? It, it helped uh, to the Linux reach to this place, but the root cause analysis, uh, it, it's, it's not given by the tool. And it's generally done using tracing. And, uh, okay, tracing is nice for me, for Steven, but not for my manager to understand, not for a newcomer to understand. So this interpretation mainly of the of the abstractions that compose the latency and how to understand the tracing, they are not straightforward, right? <clears throat> and uh, and mainly the the when when we read the trace and try to trace it back, we need to glue things by human and try to understand this and that. And uh, after ten years doing those traces and tracing by hand and try to understand trace by hand, one one gets annoyed of repeating and repeating and repeating that. Uh, so. <clears throat> who, 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 so uh, that, that's, that's the path forward that brings to RTLA. So who cares, right? Who cares about this, these things? Who cares about trying to make this analysis simpler and more readable and, and try to optimize it? Uh, the poor guy trying to debugging it, right? Is the first person. It was me trying to debug things inside Red Hat and repeating the same ritual, enable the same events, do the same interpretation, try to do this. Also, by not trying to join the analysis with the workload, many times users report just the problem, but not the root cause for it. So it, it gets annoyed because you, you have 10 bugzillas about, uh, I have a, a scheduling latency problem, and go figure what it is. Maybe they are all, all the 10 problems have the same root cause, and we are just spending 10 times the, the, the time to try to figure out those problems. And uh, how can I make that easier? How can I, I relieve the poor guy from doing this debug over and over again? In an interface that like my program manager or my project manager can read and can just say, okay, this bug has the same signature for that bug and I can correlate them. Make this adopt of the same problem. How can I bring that? Right? And also, how can I optimize this tracing to the maximum with the knowledge that we have nowadays? And also, there is the point of real time to the masses, right? All the kernel developers will, will have to run some sort of RT testing on the kernel to see if they are not breaking the kernel with their new algorithm, because the kernel will be, uh, the RT will be part of the, of the mainline kernel one, one day or the other, right? <clears throat> and there are a number of projects that need some kind of analysis that goes beyond just looking back in the trace and seeing this use case. They need more information. What else happened during the execution that I didn't get on my uh, last, or the one that broke my, my latency, that could have happened? How can I, I take that to the next level? And, and that's the idea behind the RTLA, and integrate, and actually integrating multiple tools. Right? So RTLA timer lot, it's, it's a new approach based on on, on the things that we've learned over the time, right? <clears throat> so it, it's, it's a multi-component uh, tool. 
So we have things in the kernel space and things in the user space, and they are all glued with the, the library that uh, Stephen was explaining here. So all those find the step, find the, this value inside the, that trace uh, event. It, it, it's actually what Timerlot does. So we have, <clears throat> uh, in kernel, we have an optimized tracer that tries to avoid writing things to the buffer to save time as much as possible, right? Trying to optimize that. So it does most of the, the output that Timerlot is providing here in user space, it did optimize in kernel the, the, the synchronization of these, these values, right? And it tries also to do processing that I would do in user space that would take me time. For example, uh, to compute the delta of the execution time of an interrupt in kernel, it does in kernel and optimize it. And it also, I can also control like nested events. For example, I have a thread interrupting, interrupted by a software queue, interrupted by an RQ and by an NMI. How can I compu compute all those numbers in a more optimized fashion without having, uh, let's say, false positives and giving me a trace that I can read it and not have to interpret it too much? Or I don't have to expose too much uh, data to the user space, right? I just want a report. And so it has, uh, now it has one workload in kernel, and now it's on the Linux Next, uh, there is the user space workload. And uh, the good thing about the trace points that we use on RTLA, the OS noise trace points, that they are based on the formal model of the parameter T, and they will be used for, they can be used for multiple purposes. Here I'm using it for uh, explaining the pieces of the latency. I can use them for the OS and noise, and here's the paper where I explain them. And I can use it for the RTSL, which is a tool that will come for RTLA, that shows what would be the worst uh, scheduling, uh, the worst scheduling latency scenario that I could have on my system. Neither timer lot or, or cyclic test goes to that answer, right? It's a step beyond that. Timer out and cyclic test works by sampling the code. So that they have a, they have these these characteristics, but timer lot already goes into that direction and you'll see later with some data. So and, and timer lot also has this user space part that is trying to make this tracer as easy to use as, as possible. Right? I don't need to use two tools. I don't need to to, to try to to, to reinvent the wheel here. The tool does everything. And uh, it has like a, a benchmark-like interface that shows you the numbers that you're seeing now, right? And it has an auto-analysis module that goes and, and try to explain the latency that we saw. And uh, now for Linux Next, we also have a user space workload. So timer lot, instead of working with one step that's showing the, the thread latency, it works in two steps. It shows the IRQ latency and the thread latency. And that's because they, they have different root causes for this part of the delay and this part of the delay, right? And this, the timer RQ, the timer latency on the RQ is also useful for some um, use cases where the, the users handle uh, the critical workload in the IRQ. So just here is one example I watch on YouTube because it's easier to control. So here's one example of the tool running. It's running on my, my workstation. <clears throat> here is the, I have a kernel compiling in the background and it is uh, a parameter T 6.3, I think. It was uh, last week. So RTLA uh, timer laptop, it gives us these, uh, this benchmark-like interface. And here we can see the results of the IRQ latency and thread latency. And we have some statistics here, like the current latency for the thread latency, the, current, uh, the, the minimum, the average, and the maximum values. And here also for the IRQ. So we can get these this two views of the system. Go ahead, Daniel, from the past. Oh, yeah. So clear. And here is the, the histogram output. So we can have a, a histogram of our occurrence of latency. So here I'm really limiting the CPUs to zero to three because the, the histogram generates a lot of columns. It's one for IRQ and one for the, for the actual thread latency. 
So here you can see the RQ latency is always smaller than the thread latency, and you can see here the the patterns that they create, right? And here we have like a summary of the maximum. And on the system, I was reaching like 30 or maximum here on my system. So I think it's <coughs> okay. This this part. So RTLA, I can use it as as a benchmark, a standalone as a benchmark. <coughs> so, but when testing a system, we generally have a, a maximum acceptable latency. Let's say I, I have like a, my system needs to react up to 100 microseconds or less, <coughs> or uh, my my RQ latency maximum should be 10, right? And, and TimerLot can set up and produce a report if the latency threshold is hit, <coughs> right? And uh, there is this option to set or uh, stop if the RQ latency is dead, stop if thread latency is dead, or there, and, and there is a, this magic option which is dash A that tries to enable the default options that we generally use. So. <coughs> Here's, and here's one example of the, the auto-analysis. So I'm using RTLA timer at top and say 30. It stops if it reaches 30. And here is the two output. So the two is giving me a, a human readable output of the problem. So it's showing here, Daniel, Daniel from the past showed right, that there is a spin lock there. So the IR, IRQ handler delay, the IRQ latency, the, the so, the idea here is that, I'll explain this field, but the idea here is that the tool breaks down uh, these, uh, the pieces of the latency into small pieces, so you can look for them independently, and gives hints of where the code, it was a problem. Here it was a bitter FS write, and, and uh, same C groups, and so on. But I, I will explain better the output of the autoanalysis. Here is, let me see if it's uh, if it ends here. Okay, it has started. So, the RTE autoanalysis, right? Under the hood, it's doing something similar that Stephen was showing. It's using libtracefs, parsing the trace, but it's based on some abstractions that we take from the real-time theory that makes it easier for us to understand and to interpret it. So the timer lot autoanalysis it decomposes the latency into a set of variables, and then these variables can be independently analyzed. Uh, whoever saw the first presentation I was doing about scheduling latency with the formally proved scheduling latency, this is inheriting part inheriting part of that research, right? And so they are can try to have different uh, uh, analysis and different importance, and the autoanalysis works for all preemption models. It works for the preemptor T, for the non preemptor T. It, it has all the problems, let's say, um, I try to address all the problems using a, a more generalistic way, not just parsing a single trace. So, to understand it, like on the real time theory, we have like the execution time, which is the time that we need to accomplish a, a, a job uh, that I need to execute, that I'm interested. We have the context of blocking. Blocking is when a lower priority task causes me the delay. And I have the interference, which is when the a higher priority task uh, interfered on my workload, right? And uh, if we try to look at Linux with a, a different set of tasks, we will see that Linux has a hierarchy of tasks. We can consider the most common are the threads, right? But on top of it, we have the software queues that can preempt uh, threads, but cannot preempt RQ or NMI. But it can disable uh, IRQ and cause blocking for these two. Likewise, the IRQ can preempt these two, and these two can cause block to IRQ, right? And can be interfered by NMI, and so on. So IRQ latency examples, trying to understand the, the output of timer dot. <coughs> So here is one output. Uh, I, I draw a, a timeline here to make it easier for us to understand what is going on there and try to understand the variable. So here we have an IRQ latency of 32 microseconds, right? And uh, these 32 microseconds, I can interpret in the trace and, uh, and using the OS noise um, trace points that I'll show later, I can figure out how much time it, it took from it to start, right? It was an IRQ delay of 31. 
the blocking thread was this ob 2 It was running. And, uh, and here are the stack trace of the IRQ, the, time, the, the timer IRQ. Looking, uh, looking in, the, in the stack trace, I can see that, okay, here is the lock that caused me the delay. It was this lock inside the C group uh, code in a butterfs write. So I can look at these and say, it was a, a, a VFS write, it was writing on a butterfs, doing main C group, doing C group, and there is a spin lock there, and that causes me the latency. As sweet as that. And that's why it's, it's easier for my manager to understand, because she will look at this and say 59%. And uh, here, oh, okay, so what, what was causing this, right? I can, what, what, what added this uh, IRQ lock here? And it's easy to map that to a comment. This speeds up our, our, our workflow inside Red Hat a lot, right? It doesn't even, in most of the case, if this starting repeating on a bug report, uh, 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 even the support people that are not that aware of the problems, my manager they can relate one bug to the other and say, boom, duplicate, right? So it, it gives a, a really uh, easy to read output. You can just read it. You don't need to try to interpret it too much. So for example here, another example is uh, when we don't have the system set up for, we don't have the system set with uh, uh, idle set up correctly. <clears throat> so I can have exit from idle latency. And the auto analysis can, can show you here, okay, there was an IRQ handler delay, but it, it is an exit from idle use case. If there were interrupts here, postponing it, it will also show. But here, okay, there's an exit from idle read in here. Is it from idle six, five, six, seven, six percent? Uh, yes, I'm leaving idle. And it's also printing here, okay, the exit from idle latency is high on the CPU 9. Try, try to do some setup here. Uh, RTLA has a workaround for this, which is setting the DMI latency to zero. And then you can just bypass this problem saying, okay, I will do this later, I can use this option. And a cyclic test does this by default. I didn't do this on RTLA by default because I consider this toning. So it, you are lying to the, to the user if you do this without no, letting them know that there is actually a pro. And so here we have a, a thread example, right? So <clears throat> this was done in the non real time kernel, just show that the tool can also work on that case. So here on my system, the RQ latency was very good, zero. And my, the, the, the thing that postponed the RQ latency was zero. And my RQ latency was actually just 1.6 microseconds. So, okay, I'm good here. Um, the timer at IRQ duration was nine microseconds. So there is an execution time here that, okay, nine microseconds is not, not small, but still, it's a low value in my, uh, in my analysis here. It's not that the main problem. Then I can also see here that there were tasks and IRQ and software IRQ, which are a higher priority that postponed the execution of the context switch, right? But they also here, they, they just amount for a fewer percentile of the of time. So they are not like the problem. And here is where I see, okay, most of my problem was here, right? It's this 94% of this thread blocking the, the, the schedule, right? This, this value is high because it's the non-preemptive kernel. And what was working there? It was the key worker doing the butterfs, so I'm, I'm running butterfs on all my systems. And it was doing the compress page. And here in this, in this part of the code, from here to the next scheduling point, there is a huge space in time. So if one would like to optimize the non-real-time kernel to be more responsive, they need to find a place around here to add a con rescat, for example. But the idea here is that, or not use butterfs. Yeah, that's another output. Yeah, you can, or you can set your K workers and move them to another CPU. Yeah. So the analysis is doing here, it's automating everything and try to make it as optimized with regard overheads as possible without limiting the use case. Because 
the, the timer lot is also tracing, right? It's based on tracing, and I can, I can uh, leverage timer lot using those tracing as well, trying to make it as easy as possible again. So timer lot is a front end for the tracer. The trace activi act uh, activates the OS noise trace points, and they are used to report the blocking or the interference of the that, that the thread suffers, right? Uh, we have one trace point for each for each task. So instead of printing two trace points and then processing in user space and try to compute this took this amount of time, but it was printing the other one, so I need to discount the amount of time on that one and try to do this uh, on, on user space. We can do this in kernel, minimizing the amount of data we can push to the trace buffer and try to optimize time. There is in, in the paper where I presented the, the runtime verification subsystem, I showed that doing this kind of processing, if it's faster than writing to the buffer, it's advantageous. And, and this is one of those use cases. So it's better to do simple processing here and reporting just one trace point than, than keeping writing trace and trace and trace and trace and trace. And, and here the values are processed so they are free from nested interference. Again, if I have a thread preempting my workload, and this thread was preempted by an IRQ, software IRQ, an NMI, blah, blah, blah. The values reported by the trace point, they are red net values. You can just read them. No, no need to try to, to, wonder, to, to correlate one with the other. So here's one example of the trace and uh, the autoanalysis. So I'm just saying trace is stop if it's 30 microseconds, and I'm just tracing the CPU A. And boom. So. It prints the, the autoanalysis, right? And if you see in the last line, it also saved the trace file. And I can use that trace file to, to go a step further, right? If I need to, if I want to. So here it's showing that the latency uh, was, was a thread latency, that there is this IRQ interference here. And I can read the trace file. So the things, the, the things under the hood, they are also exposed there. And, and you can go ahead and read and, and extend it. And timer lot can as well uh, add, add integration with other, other like the locking analysis and all those things. And, uh, but we can do more with tracing, right? Okay, just, just trying to show that in the, in the example, if you play it back, you see that this value was correlated with that value. One, just let me pause here. So, but if you can see here, there is this IRQ noise, right? It's just saying it started here, and that was the duration. Uh, this thread noise, or this this thread noise, it just say at this time, we started postponing the the thread context switch, and it postponed by nine microseconds. I can just read. I don't need to try to correlate later. And this is all done in kernel in in an optimized way. I'll, I'll do it later. So, and, and this, uh, so, and then I said we can even go further and, and enable other events inside RTLA without having to use another tool. So, here it is. Let's see. What uh, so, I'm, in it, I'm running that command line again, and I say, I would like to see the SCAD events, the work queue events, the IRQ vector events, and the IRQ events. And then I start running it. And then I can, I can read the trace and, and try to correlate all those, those events when they started, when they finished, and I can enhance it. Also, because timer lot controls the timer, I don't need to enable, for, uh, one example of optimization. Timer lot controls the timer, so I don't need to enable high resolution timer events to try to analyze the latency. So this is one example of optimization. It's, it's taking the trace into the extreme in optimization for this use case. So here, just showing all, all the events that I can also enable here. So, for example, this is the IRQ work entry <coughs> and, and, and the context switch. 
the air, the air latency, and say the, oh, the timer lat was awakened here, and so on. So even though by default timer lat is not giving you all the verbosity because it's not required, if you want to go deeper, you can with, uh, using a single interface. So let's, and we can go even deeper, right? And then this is the part where, where the analysis uh, is, uh, is, is going, show, shows the power that we can have here. So I can, those trace points that mention the interference and the blocking, they are always running as, as I'm running the analysis, right? When I, when I hit the latency, I can print what caused the latency. But I can also collect all those values during my execution to try to figure out if there is one bad case, one bad piece that didn't compose my final latency, but alone it could. It's just that the timer lot didn't hit the latency at that time. So I can go deeper doing data analysis of what could have happened, but didn't because the sample didn't happen that time, right? So here's the link for where I composed this, this, the command line. I will edit it to this as an option to timer lot saying histograms, but for now I'm just using the, the raw uh, trace, uh, trace functionality. So I'm copying here the command line using histograms. And then I run, you see here, I'm running the timer lot, I'm saying I would like to use this event OS noise and I would like to trigger this histogram. So I'm, I would like to see the CPU and the duration of the NMI Right? I would like to sort it by CPU and by duration in microseconds, and how many times did that thing happen? So how many times uh, NMI happened, uh, and that took uh, one microsecond, two microseconds, how many times? So here also for the IRQ noise. How many times this IRQ took place on this CPU and, and took, took this amount of time in microseconds? And say, I would like to sort CPU and duration, and I would like to see this histogram of hist count. So I'm, I started the tool here. Press enter, Daniel. Okay, Daniel from the past gave some time for me in the future to explain it. So here's the tool running. And uh, it can run for a while. And uh, when it stops, the timer data already know that you enabled a histogram. And so it saves the histogram to a file. In the future, I will add an option to enable and parse them, and you can hide this part, right? So for example here, there were some NMIs on my system, even though it didn't show on the, the final report, right? There were some, some NMIs, but they, well, that there is one here that took uh, 10 micros, oh, uh, it's, how many? Okay, let's see the, the interrupts here. It's, there are more examples. So. Here you can see I have timer interrupts going to 17 microseconds, 14 microseconds, and uh, I, I know that there is a case where the timer interrupt takes a lot of time, so here. It, it wasn't the case that I got when, when, when I was analyzing it, but there was a time that the time, local timer IRQ took 32 microseconds, and if I target for 30 microseconds, I, can have, a, I have a problem here. But it was not timer lot or even sectors would not be lucky enough to hit at that time. So it was something that happened in the past. I didn't observe, but it happened and it's here. There is a problem there. And we can even enhance on these analysis, like doing, uh, and, and then if we go deeper and deeper on this, we reach to the presentation I gave two years ago where we have the, the formally proved uh, worst case execution, uh, worst case scheduling latency. That, that's something that we will have to, to RTLA soon. So here, just showing the, the other case of interrupts. And also the, the thread noise. How much blocking time did the threads added to my, to my, to my timer lot thread, right? And here you can see that the thread blocking, they were not taking too much time, just fewer microseconds. So most of the case, what I, we are seeing are uh, IRQ uh, latencies and not thread latencies. Oh, yeah, 
okay, this amount of time, some summary. But yeah, in the future, I will parse these, these histograms to make it, it easier to read. So I don't need to, to read files. So, and uh, this is something that is coming probably soon. It's, it's on Linux Next, it, which is running timer dot in the thread in user space. <clears throat> Uh, here, the timer dot exposes a file descriptor where the tool can use to, to activate the timer dot from user space. And uh, with this use case, I can have three reports of latencies. I can have, I still have my RQ latency. This, the moment, the, the exactly moment it was scheduled without any overhead of going to user space, just the scheduling, trying to isolate every time more the, the variables, isolating variables to get more precision. And, uh, and also when it returns to you to the kernel space, I print another latency, which is the sketch return. The good thing here is that by using this approach, now, now it's just timer lot dispatching workload, but by using this approach, I can generalize timer lot for any workload. So any workload could use, uh, here's the, the other value. So any workload could use timer lot as a way to sleep. And when it wakes up, it can do any computation and by the end of the computation, it will see here what was the execution time of the response time of that computation, and it will get the report of everything that happened in between. So for example, if my thread was running and it received an interference from uh, IRQ, the RTLA timer out thread prints that, okay, there was this uh, event in the middle that you need to check. So it, it's, it's bringing, it, it's hiding all, all the analysis and try to make it as easy to use as, as possible. Just one tool, simple uh, options, and, and, and some value, some value, added value with the auto analysis. And also, the, the RTLA, oh, here is the histogram for user space. And RTLA was made using this idea of using the tracing libraries so it can be expanded. For example, it can be easily expanded at the, the locking things that Steven made. It's, it's just the same thing, it's just the same libraries. Okay, it works. So, oops. some by the ways, right? Some some tips when using the tool and, and how to proceed on the debugging. Timerlot has a, a, a rich set of options. I can oops, I, I can set the period. I can limit it to to, to the CPU time to to the CPUs I would like to run it. Uh, we can say the, the duration that I want my section, yeah, my session. I can add some debug information of how, what the tool is doing. Uh, I can add, change the priority of the thread, like make it run with SCAD deadline, it's how it works. I can say that uh, this is for next. I can say put my, my RTLA, uh, put my RTLA tr thread to this CPU to not interfere on the workload, say in DC groups. And I can do only auto analysis. Okay, I don't want to see the, the trace. I just want to print an auto analysis. And here it is. This option, the, the dump task, it's useful for a special case when we have hardware latencies influencing on my CPU. Just for example, Yuri and I were working on a system where the system was idle and I was seeing a high uh, IRQ latency. The idle setup was perfect, but I was still seeing this idle IRQ latency. And what was causing that was an, a work queue on another CPU writing to the DRM driver. So with this option, at the end of the auto analysis, it will also print all the tasks that were running on other CPUs. So I can try to catch this case where the latency is influenced by other CPU because of hardware effects. That are something I can trace on my current, uh, on my current execution. And this is, the idea and the flexibility behind RTLA. We can accumulate knowledge on how to interpret this data and try to optimize it all in a single place. So, so people can take advantage of it and not uh, creating uh, more and more tools that we can need to have. Another thing is that before running, trying to figure out if your system can do scheduling uh, latency as well, we need to try First, to see if the system isn't adding hardware latencies. That is, if the system has, for example, when on large CPUs, if they have SMIs enabled, they will cause hardware latency. Or if I have a driver that interferes with my other CPU. 
I need to try to understand those things before starting uh, going into the, the, the thread latency analysis, because this hardware latency, they can happen any time on my timeline. And so I will have timelines that are very odd. Sometimes my latency is, the in, is before the RQ. Sometimes my big latency is during the RQ. Sometimes it's after. But the system is all running idle. So it doesn't make sense. For example, 40 microseconds latency to, to schedule if I was running an idle. Right? So all those things, when you have these odd behaviors, we are generally, we are generally dealing with hardware, uh, uh, with hardware latencies. So the, the, oops. there is this other tool inside the RTLA that is the hardware lot that uses the OS noise tracer. Okay, let's use it here too. Yeah. So the timer lot, it uses the OS noise tracer. That's another trace that the RTLA uses. It uses it with IRQ disabled. So I can see for example, on this period of time, I can see how much runtime the thread had and how much noise it observed and how much CPU time was available for the system to run without the, the, the noise that we can have. So here was, during my period, how much noise did my CPU uh, suffered? And here's one example, right? Here is the sum of one period, but every single piece of noise what was the largest single piece of noise and 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 is this right the max single i saw an 11 microseconds uh, gap in time that i cannot relate to to irqs or threads they were not running right and here i can have a counter of how many nmis because i cannot mask nmis how many nmis happen and how many of these gaps, I couldn't relate to anything in the operating system. So it was something outside of the operating system. And in here you can have just, I don't know, on top of it, Paolo Bonzini uh, and, uh, and I and, uh, and Federico, a student at Polymi, we are working on, ex on expanding this output to showcase where KVM was added in the hardware latency. So it was not the hardware of the host, it was the KVM vCPU being prompted. So we can augment this. And, and that's, that's why it's good to have those host tools running uh, uh, integrated, right? We can integrate everything in a single place. And uh, also here, the hardware noise, like timer dot, I can enable other events to try to figure out what was causing. So I have a max status of 31, I say stop if I have a latency higher than 15, and I would also like to see the NMI events. So it starts running. Boom, the stop trace and shows the trace. One thing that I would like to add here is, okay, so it's showing here, there was the, the sample threshold, and it, there was one interference. Something interfered it, with it, it was the NMI. And then you can see what was running inside the NMI. One thing that I would like to add to RTLA is instead of writing the, a file to write a, a trace command data where I can join perf and trace command data into a single file. Um, Final remark, so RTLA, it, uh, it, was born as, uh, it was born as the idea of doing this kind of tracing analysis in, in the most, uh, let's say, perfectioned way that we could. Trying to reduce overhead, trying to automate the analysis, trying to generalize it, and try to integrate multiple uh, ways to see the system inside a single tool, right? Integrating tracing in the tool. Uh, it produced a summary for the root cause for latent spikes, and it's a good starting point for the analysis, even for the non-experts, right? And, uh, and that's the, the, the turning point of time lot. And uh, it does it without blocking this, the, the user from using other more advanced tracing. So it can only get better. For example, we can integrate that blocking tool inside RTLA and, and move forward. And, and that's the idea. Also, RTLA, 
it's I, I call it a, a meta tool because it's not a tool. It's a, a binary that calls all the remains. So I can have multiple tools inside RTLA. So with a single tool, we can do this kind of analysis. We could integrate Stevens code. We could do other tracings and other analysis using a, a, a single binary that uh, it's it's part of the kernel. And uh, Okay, as I say, uh, RTLA is the home of other tools like timer lot, OS noise, hardware noise, and but uh, but there are more to come. Like there is a, a tracer that just used the OS noise trace points to show the execution time of the of the tasks. That's for free. The OS noise events already does it. We can uh, leverage on those. Uh, we can just focus on IRQ execution time. That that's a request from people at Red Hat. There is that work that I did previous to this where we decompose the latency into independent variables and then we trace all these independent variables and then glue the worst case of them all. That's, that's one of the motivations for the RTLA. And uh, the, why am I not exploring that first? Because that requires some trace points that are not always enabled and they are the IRQ and preemptive disabled trace points that Steven were mentioned. They are generally not enabled by default because they cause overhead. We need to optimize that and then add in these, the, the full worst case latency analysis. But Timerlat is, is doing a step forward already with those histograms. And uh, we are working with integration with KVM so we can understand if the root cause is on the virtual CPU or in the host and, and try to detect, for example, hardware latencies on the host, even though I am inside the KVM, and try to report that, for example, for a provider. And whatever the community needs, the, the, the doors are open inside RTLA. And that's it, thanks. Any questions? Do you have locking analysis in, in the list here for RTLA? We can add it. Because uh, I wonder also why no one is adding trace, uh, trace points to locking primitives. Like uh, Steve, uh, in Steve's presentation, he was using uh, function tracer, actually. Overhead. 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 Function tracer is, lo function tracer is uh, lower overhead than uh, trace, point. trace point? Yes. Really? Oh. Yeah. There is also options inside. People in Perf have been using a BPF to augment those those lockings taken and get the name and get more information from that. RTLA can also use the BPF if people need. There are multiple ways to do the things, and the idea behind, on RTLA is try to figure out which one is the most efficient to reduce the noise to the extreme and, and try to make those, those analysis. But yes, locking analysis is something that can fit inside RTLA. Yeah, because uh, if you do uh, real trace points, you can uh, grab more data. Yes. But they, and that's the point that we would have to optimize, either optimize those trace points so distros can enable them by default, or we could, could do work around using tra function tracer and, and try to figure out things. What, what is the best way? You can use the BPF. What is the best way that we could reach that? And, and the idea of using a single tool is that we can <laughs> aggregate the knowledge of the people and selecting the best thing to, to do. Yeah. But it's because trace points aren't enabled because of performance. And uh, where is uh, your uh, kernel part uh, uh, merged in? The, the timer lot? Yeah. It's merged. The, yeah. These things are, are, are all part of the kernel. There is this dash user space function. That, that's the only thing that wasn't merged. But it's on Linux next. It, look, luckily, with some luck, or it will be ne so in yeah, the next release. So I need release. to look for uh, 6.3 or what? Uh, 5.14? Ah, 5.14? Oh, 5.14, it was the first 14. It was the first kernel with, with timer lot tracer. 5.16, it was the first with RTLA. And, and anything on, on, let's say, 6 uh, beyond, the things are pretty stable and usable. Fedora already packages all those RTLA and, okay, and the tracers. Uh, is there a way for, especially on embedded systems, but uh, 
sorry. Yeah. sorry. Uh, is there a way with um, hardware noise or one of the tracer, for example, to induce the delays that we know are possible on the hardware because there is a contending GPU that's running or, or you know, yeah. hammering DDR or you know, you know, other things that's happening, and we artificially introduce this noise into the into the test that we are running and figure yeah. out what would be the outcome. Is that yeah. something possible? The the the, for, the the tool actually just measures and doesn't exercise the systems, right? They they measure what they can what the system is and the conditions where the system is. There are tools that people use to exercise portions of the system to to generate those latencies, right? And then we have RT Evol in, uh, in in nowadays we have RT Evol and there is the stress NG, but yes the 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 exer exercising the system is is work for older tools. Here we measure it, but if one would like to add like measure uh, workload stress inside their TLA, why not? I, I was just trying to add an hypothetical load and see how it behaves. That's that's the yeah to measure the worst. Uh, I mean, model the worst case kind of a thing. Yeah, it depends on the use case, depends on what you use, and 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 create a history of what causes every latency. It's, it would be a nice tool, but it's a, a different scope, right? Okay, thanks. There's a question from uh, the virtual attendee. Do we benchmark or plan to benchmark wrong RTLA on mainline RT kernel branch? It's all mainline. You can just run the tool and, and benchmark it. it out, out code is already mainline that I'm talking here. There's just one option that's still not mainline, that is dash U option, that, that should, should be merged with some lock. Which will probably go in this week. Yeah. Or next week. You see, Steve and I aren't competing. We're working together. He's sending the merge request. <laughs> I understand. I need the, those libraries, right? The lib trace trace lib. Yeah. Do you recommend me to keep those libraries also when on my production software, or just for analysis, my development? Is any effect of any bad effects of, of the real time, or I don't know. Steven? Of those libraries. That's a question for it's, it's better for Steven. I mean, I mean, the library, if you have tools that use them, then you need them on the production. I mean, uh, some people actually use them on production, so it's nothing that's hard. It, it's actually an easy way to interact with the tracing system. Some people disable tracing on, if, you're, if you disable tracing on your system for whatever reason, then you don't need them. But if you have tracing, you're going to use tracing at all whatsoever. Um, I'm actually giving a talk uh, on Wednesday at the ELC part of EOS about you read ahead, resurrection of you read ahead, if you're familiar with that. Uh, you read ahead is a way to, um, that what basically it does for boot services, or if you want to bring something up fast, it will read uh, what pages are pulled in for uh, an application, and then it will save it, so what it will do then, before you run your application, you could say, start pulling into the page cache all the things that this application will use, like say if you have a VM or something you wanna bring up fast, it's used for that. So basically, I'm talking about this for you read ahead, it uses libtracefs, the same thing that RTLA uses, to do this feature. So it's not just for real time and tracing. I mean, it's a tracing utility it uses, but it's for uh, fast boot ups and fast loads on a system. But uh, yeah. But but one can use these traces directly, right? One can use it. The timer lot tracer, they, they are all in kernel, so you can use it uh, even without RTLA. You could use the, the kernel part and the analysis part, do it the analysis by yourself, using the, the timer lot tracer, enabling the events directly on the trace uh, fast directory. There There is a way even without, but I mean, the, the library is useful. It's, else okay thank you all oh just one question one more question one more question just came in on zoom 
Can you talk a bit more about the user thread feature that's coming? Will there be multiple user threads? What work will happen in the thread? Sorry, where it is? About the user thread feature yeah. that's coming, will there be multiple user threads? What work will happen in the thread? Oh, the, there will be one thread per CPU. And currently, if, there is, if you look at the tracing documentation, timer.documentation documentation explains what would be the main for, for using that. Uh, okay, a simple user space tool in C that could use that interface. There's an example there. And uh, you can edit any code that you want inside that example. Right? You can do bubble sort. You can do stress your video card. You can do anything you would like to. Uh, but uh, Timerlat is just using, it's not running, Timerlat is adding its own thread, and these threads aren't running any code. They're just sleeping. Waking up, going to sleep. Waking up, going to sleep. And then the user can add any, they can dispatch their own workload instead of asking RTLA to do that. And they can put whatever workload that they, they would like to do. That, that option was inspired by Gration from NI. He mentioned that he used something similar that he, he added his workload and tried to measure the response time. It was at the OSS uh, North America last year. Good, thanks.